High Grade Universal Century Masala. Hey, what's up again, everybody? It's Robert, 184, 2Rs, 2Bs, Gundam Reviews.net. Today, to take a look at the parts of the completed High Grade Universal Century Masala, let's go see what Paptimus has in store in terms of the parts to miss. Here's the plates emptied of their purple and dark blue, and you can see some boosters back there. Once you see the height comparison, you'll appreciate just how large these are. The arms and shoulders are a neat build, as is that chest-head combo there. Long legs to go along with some interesting high heels there. And you're also going to have a pretty practical base there to get him up when he's transformed as the first ever Transformer. Bottom to top now, and one of the best parts of this for me is when you see these colors put together, it's the kind of thing that puts the HDUC Rose and Zulu to shame. Bandai chose these two shades just perfectly, and the gray is a fantastic compliment. First of all, up for the top of the legs, you're going to notice that the hips here are going to be moving up and down ever so slightly, and they'll rotate forward and back, but not a huge degree of motion back there. Always impressed when they're going to give you piping there, actually colored up, and even though it's going to be unfortunate that it's got that colored piece in the middle that you'd want to go and paint up, sorry, to add some color there, it's still going to be looking better to have it. Not a big bend there, but then you are going to get this very nice one back here, and this vein on the back is going to be able to move up and down, the actual construction itself, again, just getting these nice purple pieces around here look fantastic. You've got these red seals, yes, that could have been plastic as you'll see on the forums, they did a better job up there. But it's a really neat mechanism down here for actually putting together these very unique looking feet. First of all, they're going to be rocking back and forth there. You've got the claws that are going to be moving in and out. This is the flat surface that's going to be on there. And you're also able to take the toes and move them in. But it's the side-to-side -side movement here, which is surprisingly good. And hopefully going to do a good job of keeping up this awkward looking fellow. And you know you're talking tall when you're almost as large as the blue pylons in the shopping mall. The waist, chest, and head is all going to be one unit here, and it's going to have some definite pros and cons. Starting with the colors again, you've got this big color here that's going to be making up the dark blue, looking good offset with the purple there. First of all, for the head, usually I do this at the end, but it was a little bit disappointing when I put this together to see exactly how many black seals there are underneath this. It's the kind of thing where you think that they could have just been using this dark blue for an actual piece of plastic underneath. However, once you actually go and cover it up with the various layers of purple that you're dropping on top, it's not going to be looking all that bad, and the small pink seal for the mono eye is going to be looking good. When you see it at this angle, though, it's going to be up at a slightly awkward angle, and by that I mean you actually keep this guy sort of properly positioned. If you go straight down, then I think the eye is going to be looking better. But something that's disappointing has to be that yellow part up there. You've just got a raised section, and this yellow seal that they give you is going to be offset on one side, and it looks absolutely horrible when you put it on there. I went at it with my modeler's knife just to trim off the bottom part a little bit more. Still going to look terrible, which probably means at the end of this review, I'm just going to go and swipe that off, and it'll disappear and never be seen. Paint it if you want to do it right. But this yellow seal down here is going to be looking good, and perhaps it would have been nice if they had shown off a little bit of colors inside the vents. But nonetheless, when you're seeing this big chunk of grey back there, they do a good job of actually detailing it up, which is going to be good because you are going to be seeing it from the front. You can see where the shoulders attach on, these are going to be rotating around, and these are swappable, so you can take those off when you want to go MA form. The legs go on there, and on the back they're also going to be giving you the bonus of these parts here, which is going to be very important of moving around for the thrusters. And disappointing, but hey, it's hidden in the back, so you're not really going to see it. You've got this purple seal that's going to fold around it awkwardly, and that pink part there on the inside. But the neat part, I think, for me, is going to be the transformation, because if you slide this part up, you'll see that it's going to dislodge the head there, and this whole thing is actually going to slide down and lock into place fairly well, fold that back up, and you can see that it's going to go back into place to go and terrorize Camille, Char, Emma, or whoever seems to be around. And a space jet needs an angry face down there, and this one's going to have it. Something to be aware of is that these two parts here are just going to be attached and quite simple. Very easy to dislodge and lose, so if you ever see a piece around, check there first. He's also going to have some pink seals, which are not going to be prominently seen when he's in MS mode. Once you go MA, though, they definitely will be. And another bonus back here is that you're going to have this part, which is going to be able to move along with this. But that big red piece there on the inside is all going to be plastic. We've seen on some other recent kits that you're supposed to be putting red in all sorts of directions. This one, nice, simple, and easy, and of course, the oversized nature is going to make that possible. Now the arms themselves have to be one of my favorite colors because, uh, would you call the red tertiary here? Anyway, I think it looks fantastic when you add it on to the two blues. And again, no seals, big plus. So what are you going to be getting? Well, first of all, these have got to be easy to take on and off for when you're swapping out the shoulders there. 
But check out the shoulders, not a lot of toys in Gunpla are going to have a gimmick that works out this nicely. Look at that range of motion as the cap opens, and inside, nine missiles of doom there. If you multiplied that by a thousand, it would be even more fun. But close it up and it's going to look good, or open it up to make it even more prevalent, and you could paint up some of the details there. But I think it looks great as is. For the shoulders, yes, they'll rotate it around, and that's going to be showing off this red piping. And this is the kind of thing, yes, they're giving you two pipes in one piece there, but it's still better to have it. And besides, you're always going to be looking at it at this angle, so you're always going to see it as two separate pipes. But the fact you've got this big prominent one prominently displayed up there, I think is fantastic. And for the actual elbow there, you'll notice that it's going to be bending forward there, and then you're going to be getting a nice bend. So you are getting 90, not much more, so for long arms, perhaps you'd expect something a little bit better. But then it's on to the next gimmick here. First, I should mention that these hands, they do separate. They're interestingly made here in this light gray here, but just the front and the back can easily separate. I've already lost it a couple times, and I haven't even put the guy together yet. But for the forearms, this is where it starts to really shine because you've got this red part on here, and I think that the claws, when they're folded up, look really good. I went in there with a black real touch marker, and you've got these little details added onto the side. I know some people hate the parts forming, but the base is going to help with this, but I think they look really good folded up there, and you also have the ability to detach this because of the two poly caps. Take that off, put that up here, and then this is going to lock into place nicely with the missile pods and come into play for the actual transformation. So with your base or ziplock at the ready, when he gets angry, yes, the claws are going to be deployed, and you can also get to see the grenade launcher inside there. This is actually made out of two pieces of plastic. The gray is going to be exactly the same there, and it's just got three holes, so you're just going to have three pegs there to hold on the cover, and you just go and put on this single claw here, and you're going to have this offset one here, which I think is always a nice touch, because otherwise it would just be a little bit too symmetrical. So the fact that you've got sort of this splayed hand, I think they've learned some stuff from the Banshee, and this is a fun way to do it. And when you do that, it makes his arms, which are already seemingly impressively armed, all the more impressive... And if you want to talk boosters, well, how about these? They're just, I think they're simple, incredibly easy to put together, but I still think they really pay off. Something you've got to be careful of is these fall off all the time, but you can see they just attach on there nice and easy. Large purple pieces, but I think that actually adds to it as you've got a seamless look to it there. This is actually a separate piece, and I've added a little bit of lining in there, so it's inconsistent depending on the way exactly how snug it is. The boosters on the back, yes, well, you can go ahead and add some proper red in there or metallicize them to make them look even better. Here's the attachment point, and then coming forward, you've also got the big blasters there. You've got the purple piece down there. It's actually going to be looking good. Of course, separate color would be nice there, but this is where I think they actually do the seals well and what they didn't quite do with the head. You've just got a simple, just raised area underneath there, but then the yellow seal, it's going to be wider on one side and shorter on the other, so read the directions carefully, and there's just a little slit in the middle on either end, and when you put it on, it doesn't seem like it's going to go on there very well, but just by maneuvering it around with your thumb, I think you can get it in exactly the right place, and it's the kind of thing where on the underside, it's going to be in this indented area here, so it's going to be looking very, very sharp, but this is something where you can even have a raised colored seal, and I think it's going to be working well. I wish they had learned that for somewhere a lot more prominent. And sure, it's being propped up by that extra piece down there, but you still get an idea of just how monstrous this high grade is. And for weapons here, well, besides the shoulders and the forearms, there's not much except in the size of these oversized beam sabers. I think they look fantastic. You've got two custom hands there that are going to be holding it. These ones don't separate as easily, and there's a peg holding it in. The large master grade size beams are going to be looking sharp when deployed. And usually a base wouldn't warrant its own part here, but this one is doing pretty well, at least in terms of the extras, although you've got to say it's going to look pretty ugly out there. First of all, it is locked underneath, so it looks like you can separate it there, but not while the lock is in place. You'd have to just pop it out. But these are the parts that are going to be swapping off for the shoulders there. You've got much smaller ones when he's in MS mode, and you're just going to add on these much larger ones, which will deploy the actual boosters properly. But you can see this down here. This is going to be looking pretty cool in terms of storing a master grade beam saber on a high green, a high grade base. That's sharp, and you can see where you attach in the single claw and that second claw over there. And underneath, there's going to be even more goodies as you get to take the hands holding the beam sabers there, as they don't really have a stow position on the MS itself. And if you've got the claws deployed, then you can take the cover and put those in there. And you've got the choice here of the beam saber hand or the open dynamic hand. Lots of options. You do not need a Ziploc with this guy. And if you're not flipping it around, well, everything is actually going to stay in place. 
That's gonna wrap up my look at the parts so far and everything is popping in terms of the colors and the mobility is actually working out pretty well there with the knees and the elbows being good enough. The ankles seem interesting, but it's gonna be neat to see the way that transformation is actually gonna play out. But when you're talking about a massive MS and MA here, I think it should be working pretty well despite being only a high grade. Anyway, stick around to see it all put together and transformed and as always, let me know what you think with a comment down below. I always love to hear your thoughts on the kit and the video. Thanks for watching everybody. See ya. It looks like I can go no further.